So um, a materialist philosophers go around in circles trying to explain away consciousness. The leading school of thought in Californian academic world, the Churchlands, at, um, I've forgotten where they are, maybe California Institute of Technology, um, they're called eliminative materialists because they're the most extreme form of materialists uh, who, who take the view that consciousness does not exist. Uh, they're talking in terms of subjective experience, they call folk psychology that only happens because people aren't educated enough or don't know enough about science, uh, in which case they talk just in terms of nerve impulses and brain activity. Well, all of this is obviously rather unsatisfactory. And until... <laughs> Until about 20 years ago, though, these schools of thought ruled the roost. But in the last 20 years, consciousness studies has become a serious and important field of scientific inquiry. And within that realm of consciousness studies, there's been increasing debate about the nature of minds. People have begun to explore consciousness through subjective states, through meditation, through psychedelic experience, uh, the effects of mind over body, the effects of mind over healing, uh, the placebo effect and many other areas of inquiry. Um, and increasingly, philosophers of mind and scientists in consciousness studies have come to see that this materialist attempt to explain away consciousness just won't do. Apart from anything else, it denies free will. And so um, the materialists think that the, everything that you think is caused by physical causation in your brain. Now, next time you have an argument with a materialist friend who tries to persuade you that they're right and materialism's right, you could ask them why they themselves believe in materialism. They're likely to say because of science and reason. But, of course, to use, invoke science and reason implies you have freedom of choice to respond to evidence. But actually, their philosophy says that everything they do or anyone else do, they only do because their brain makes them do it. Um, and it's basically a self-refuting philosophy because if you're a materialist, you can't really try and persuade anyone else to be one because you're presupposing that your mind is free to make rational decisions and choices. What's happening at the moment is that materialists are jumping ship. They're, they're leaving, they're, they're defecting from this world view. One of the leaders in this movement was uh, Galen Strawson, a British philosopher of mind, who wrote a key paper about five or six years ago called, Does Materialism Imply Panpsychism? And he answered yes. Now, panpsychism is the belief or doctrine or philosophy that psyche, mind, is present everywhere throughout nature. Pan means everywhere, psychism means mind or psyche. That um, nature, it, there's a kind of element of mind or, or psyche, even in electrons and atoms, that um, the argument here is that you can't have consciousness emerge in human brains unless the matter that it emerges from already has some kind of primitive form of consciousness or lower level consciousness. Otherwise, if you just say it appears miraculously when a brain reaches a certain size, it's another kind of dualism. You just have mechanism and then a kind of miraculous appearance of consciousness that's unexplained. A more recent convert to panpsychism was Thomas Nagel, uh, Britain's, uh, uh, the US, uh, the America's leading philosopher of mind at um, Columbia in New York. And Nagel wrote a book a couple of years ago called Mind and Cosmos, Why the Materialist Neo-Darwinian Conception of Nature is Almost Certainly False. Now this story stirred up a furore in the New York Review of Books, the New York Times, and in the, in the kind of intellectual world in America. The, the materialist camp, people like Steven Pinker, Daniel Dennett, and so on, were absolutely furious, and, and, and they denounced him in, in the most intemperate language. But Nagel's book is a very fascinating book, because here's somebody who is as an atheist and was a kind of materialist, who just realizes you see him thinking out loud in this book, and he ends up by saying we need a completely new kind of science. And what's more, we need a theory of evolution that sees purpose in the way evolution has occurred, both on li in life on Earth and in the cosmos. Fascinating to see this tremendous turnaround. The latest um, panpsychist, the person who left materialism to join the panpsychist camp, is one of the most hardcore of the materialists in California. 
Christoph Koch, who was uh, at California Institute of Technology. Um, he worked with Francis Crick um, on consciousness and the brain. And he came out about six months ago in an article in Scientific American arguing for panpsychism as the way forward. Now, this is a fascinating thing, you see, that there's, there's the, the, the materialists, the most hardcore materialists, are going over to an idea that there's some kind of mind in nature, which is not very different from animism, which is what the scientific revolution start, started off by rejecting, the idea of a living world, a living nature.